Welcome to Celestia Lights Gifts. My name is Valerie. I'm working on a couple test pieces today before I start a commission, and I wanted to share my colors with you. I'm using the Shelly Art Bloom technique, and I'm trying out a new pouring medium. It's a Val Spar Ultra Base C Untinted House Paint. I'll be sharing the pink colors today and do the yellow in a different video. So to start, this is Arteza's Rose. And all I did was add the Valspar Base C and probably three or four dollops of the actual color itself. The next color is this little piggy or TLP Hustle. I dispersed the pigment in Liquitex pouring medium, trying to keep that gloss down because it, it gives me wonky cells. Um, and I did add to the Valspar Basie about four, yeah, three to four dollops of Bare 8300. And it looks a little thin in this video. I think the next time I'll just stick to the three dollops because when I use these colors the next day, they had thickened up. I have another pigment here from TLP. This is Fairy Floss. It's a light shimmery pink color. The hustle that you saw before is a neon and it did take quite a bit to dissolve all of the pigment. The rest of the pigments dissolve pretty easy in the Liquitex pouring medium. I was previously using as a pouring medium for the Shelly Art Bloom Technique Bare 8300 and Joe Sonia and that worked really great for me for the first couple of years since I started but past six months to a year just have gotten wonky cells so I don't know if the formula changed. This color right here is Persian Pink or Persian Rose I'm trying to remember from Amsterdam. Again just just the Valspar Base C was added to a few dollops of the acrylic paint. So those are my pink colors for today and you'll see me try lots of variations of these pink colors. Lots of fails two successes, and out of those, I let the client pick which one she liked better. Of course, she chose the super bright and vibrant one, which was my favorite as well. When she had had her first girl, I had poured variegating pink and yellow, pink and yellow, because the color scheme of her bedroom was pink lemonade, I believe, uh, a letter J for Jacqueline. So she was getting ready to have her next baby girl, which she did a few weeks back, and her name started with the letter S. So I'll let you guess which letter S girl name she came up with. It was quite fun to watch all the responses on Instagram. So my first fail comes in using this tiny blower. There because I'm variegating the yellow and the pink and the yellow and the pink on quite a big letter S, I thought, oh, I'll save some of my breath and use the tiny blower. It didn't blow out very well at all. I tried blowing out the cell activator with my breath and that didn't work out either. So hence the repour and I think we're trying a different order of colors here. In picking my colors, and not only for the pink but also for the yellow, I tried to pick two pigments and pay attention to the opacity. So I have a semi-transparent color and an opaque color. The Amsterdam light pink was opaque and the rose, I believe it was either semi-transparent or semi-opaque. The fairy floss is transparent. Hustle pigment is opaque being a neon color from TLP. So this one did come out cute. However, I just, the color wasn't as vibrant as I wanted it. So I am gonna re-pour over it, don't hate me. One thing I am happy about is how the white cell activator is reacting with the pouring medium and the colors. I typically don't like using just white cell activator. I like using either Payne's Gray or Prussian Blue or double it up with a darker cell activator and a lighter cell activator like white. But I'm trying to keep this piece that I'm working on, the S, similar to the J, and that had all white lacing and cell activator. So that's why I'm using the white. 
My pillow is PPG Multi Pro. I get that at Home Depot. And I do decant it into smaller containers. They have those little plastic like painting containers in the painting section. I think they're like two quart um, size. It's the smaller one. I usually use like three or four of them. I leave them open for a couple of days and let the paint thicken up. And it's perfect. It makes it really stretchy. So what I'm starting to notice is that my paints have thickened up. So I think next time, if if when I'm mixing them, it looks like they're too thin, then I'm just going to leave it because especially with opaque paints, they thicken up pretty quick. Just leaving them uncovered while you're painting, they thicken up. So I was afraid that they were all going to be too thin, especially the piggies, but everything actually ended up thickening up. I wanted to share when you see me scraping up paint, which I'll do in just a second, I'm scraping that up and putting it into like a, a waste cup, just a regular solo cup. And sometimes I use that paint to uh, pour on as a pillow and sometimes I use it to, as like a flow extender to cover my corners and help the paint move and cover the whole piece, especially like a square piece. The corners are the last things to get covered when you're spinning out. What I'm testing here more is more or less the, the color and the vibrancy than the composition. So while some of the others had beautiful compositions that I really liked and I would have kept, it's the, the colors that I'm, I'm going for. So if I have anything else to share, I'll pop in. Otherwise, just sit back, relax, and hope you enjoy the music that I picked for you. Love until I'm 